Okay, hello everyone. Simon Jacobson here. Over, I hope everyone is well. Another episode of Meaningful Live. We are in the middle of our Bible series, the best selling book of all time, learning lessons from its narrative, its characters, its personalities, profound psychological, emotional, and spiritual lessons that are actually timeless in many ways, very timely to our times and our challenges. So today I want to speak about, and here's how we titled it, what to do when you're stuck. Four wrong approaches and the fifth correct one. And this program is dedicated by Dr. Tamara Kalir in honor of her birthday on January 11th. Okay, I believe that every one of us can easily state that we have been stuck in our lives, perhaps more than once. And stuck meaning we feel trapped, we feel we have nowhere to go between a rock and a hard place, all the different expressions that are used in describing a situation where you don't know where to go. Now, many books and many workshops and seminars have been delivered on this topic from the beginning of time. But there's a fascinating story in the Bible that is perhaps the first documented stuck between a rock and a hard place ever mentioned. And that is the story that when the Jewish people in the famous exodus from Egypt, they're leaving Egypt, the Jewish people are, have the Red Sea or Reed Sea before them, the Egyptians are pursuing them. And they're stuck. They're stuck after hundreds of years of horrible holocaust and genocide and bondage and slavery and all the discrimination that they endured, they finally are free and the Egyptians change their minds and decide we're going to pursue our former slaves. That itself is a whole story of its own, the cruelty of that. But but in front of them, there's a sea, a sea, the Red Sea, or sometimes known as the Reed Sea. Some say red was really meant to be read, but that's for another time as well. What do you do? So the Bible documents that the Jews, the Jewish people, broke into four groups. Four groups. And you would think that these four groups covered the entire spectrum of every possible reaction to being stuck, to being trapped. Group number one said, you know what? We thought we're free. We're really not. Let's just return to Egypt. Maybe some of the Stockholm Syndrome, being attached to your, your captive, captor, to your victimizer, to your uh, master. And let's just return. It's not worth it. Resignation, option one. Surrender. Group number two, the exact opposite. Let's go to war. We'll go to war with the Egyptians. We will not go back into slavery. That was group number two, the fighters. Let's fight. Group number three were the religious ones. They said, let us pray. Let us turn to God and pray. God took us out of Egypt. Let us pray for his help. And the fourth group, finally, said, let us jump into the sea. Suicide, escapism. Instead of surrendering or fighting or praying, let's jump into the sea. Four groups. It doesn't seem like there's any other option. Moses turns to God and says to God, what should we do? Here are the four groups. And God responds in a famous classic verse in the book of Exodus. None of them are right. He rejects each one of the four. To those that say they want to return to Egypt, you will not return to Egypt. To those that want to go to war, God, do not, do not have to fight. You, God will fight for you. To those that wanted to pray, it says, be silent. And to those that wanted to jump in the sea, no. So Moses is left with a dilemma. So what should we do? One word. God says, I already told you what to do. Vaiso, it's a Hebrew word. It's a powerful word. Move forward. Forge ahead. You've come this far. Why are you challenging or questioning? Why are you doubting me? Forge ahead. 
Don't stay paralyzed in these four groups because you could end up your entire life just arguing it out and not going anywhere. And of course, being hurt in the process. Forge ahead. But there's a sea in front of us. So one man, Nachshem ben Amenodov, the Torah tells us, did exactly that. He went into the water and reached his neck. And what happens? The waters parted. The great miracle of the parting of the sea, the splitting of the sea. Now immediately you'll say, one second, are we expected for miracles? No, there's much more than the miracle here. It's much more than just the parting of a sea. It means there is nothing that's impossible as long as you're moving forward. The greatest enemy is paralysis. And all four, each has merit on its own. There are times we should. We have to sometimes compromise. I don't want to say surrender. Sometimes we have to fight. Sometimes we need to pray. And sometimes we need to jump into the sea. I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, sometimes we do need some form of escapism. But none of them on their own are complete answers. They each have their own merit. But that was not the answer. The answer is forge ahead. And no one thought of that. Forge ahead is a psychological approach and attitude to challenges that you have everything you need to succeed in life, even though it may seem that you're completely stuck. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it has happened to me, and I'm sure to others as well. Sometimes you really feel a dilemma that you can't get out of. And you struggle, and you say, I tried this option. You review this option. And you obsess over it. And you really don't get anywhere. But as long as you still have hope, and as long as you're still holding on, you're still in the ring, as they say, something opens up that you would not have expected. And that's the key. To see it through. I want to share with you a very powerful and beautiful analogy. It's from the Baal Shem Tov, The great mystic. The great Hasidic master. The Baal Shem Tov, The master of the good name. That was his name. Yisrael Baal Shem Tov. So he gives an analogy. And it's an analogy of what we call the spiral staircase. We all know what a spiral staircase is, right? But in Yiddish, the expression for a spiral staircase is Schwindel trap. Schwindel trap. Now, swindle means to swindle. A swindling staircase has more, more dramatic than a spiral staircase. Why is it called a swindling staircase? Because it swindles you and deceives you into thinking that maybe you're not reaching your destination. So when you go up a regular staircase, we all know, no matter how long, how many steps, but you see the destination closer, farther. But you're going up and you are traveling in one direction. In a spiral staircase, often to save space or for other reasons, aesthetic reasons, you keep going in a circle, 360 degrees. And you keep turning 180 degrees, and your back is facing the destination. So as you go up, every, every, every revolution you make, you're, for 50% of the time, you're facing not toward the destination. Just as you're about to reach the apex, the top, you need to make a full turn. And your, and your back is facing your destination. So you can convince yourself that you haven't made progress. How many of us give up and we don't see it through? Remember, every effort you make it bears fruit. Everything achieves something. You may not see it right away, but it weakens the resistance and you softens the resistance and you make progress. What the Baal Shem Tov is saying is in life, it's not always a straight staircase. Very often the staircases are swindling. They swindle us. They deceive us into thinking that, no, you're not reaching your destination. And many of us give up just at the moment, just at the moment when we're about to achieve our goals. That means, by you so, that means moving forward. It's not something that you can always explain because you could say, well, it seems like all my options are gone. And you could always say, maybe I should fold them. Who says I should hold them? So it's true, we need to have discretion. We need advice, sometimes counseling with an with a objective mentor. Because there are times we fight for something and it's time to let go. But very often the opposite is true. That you need to keep moving on and moving forward. So if it's something really important to someone, I very often suggest to people, I said, do not give up. They'll say, well, I've tried everything. You know? You stay there. Stay in this position. 
Maybe something will open up. Some new opportunity will come. Maybe there'll be a shift. Maybe there'll be a change. And those that see it through reach the destination. The key is not to allow us psychologically to give up. And that was the main message. Because all four groups, ultimately, it was something that would be compromising true move forward movement. Going back and surrendering and resignation obviously means just going back to the past and you remain a victim. Going to war at times is necessary, but then your whole life can be a fight. Many, peop- many of us who have challenges with family members or others, we end up just fighting our entire lives. It's draining, it's exhausting, it weakens us. And more import- most importantly, it takes up valuable time and real estate in you that you could have focused on something positive. The prayer, yes, we need prayer, but you can't rely only on prayer. You need to have an, make an effort. You need to make a container, is the expression that the mystics use. You need to prepare the ground so a blessing can, can manifest. Additionally, prayer, but not prayer alone. And finally, escapism, which is avoiding the whole thing and running away from the entire thing, like denial in a way, is equally problematic. Yes, there are times we need to not be completely consumed with them, and some denial is healthy, especially at certain stages, but that's not a life plan. All these four are not life plans. There are steps, and sometimes can have some value, but never as a life plan. Life plan resignation is is not a game plan, nor is war, nor is prayer, and nor is denial. Not just jumping in denial, but denial. Denial is not the river Nile. Another form of denial. So even though pieces of them have merit, but that's not how you make a game plan. Your life plan has to be driven by one word. Always move forward. Better make a mistake in movement than be right in paralysis. The greatest risk of all is not taking risk. But here it goes further than that. It's an attitude. They were going somewhere. They were on their way to the promised land, a promise that was made to them hundreds of years earlier. They were on their way to Mount Sinai, on the way to the promised land. There were promises made. And not just promises. We're talking about from serious ones, divine promises. And they had parents and grandparents and great-grandparents all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They weren't in a vacuum suddenly stuck. They came with a lot of ammunition, so to speak. A lot of power, force behind them, genetics, genes, promises, efforts, sacrifices that were made. And the same is with each one of us. We don't stand in a vacuum. If you're all alone in existence, it, becomes, it can be very overwhelming. But we're never alone. The challenge is that we should know that and be aware that there are forces at work that are helping you if, just, if you allow it. So how do you, if you stop now and you don't move forward, those forces can't manifest themselves. That's the point. The point is, even though I may not see a solution right now and I'm stuck or I feel stuck and trapped, that doesn't mean there isn't a solution. It means you don't see it yet. So you have only one, really one option is to keep moving, is doing whatever you can to move, even if it's difficult. You say, where can I move? So call up somebody, go talk to a new person, try something else, fresh air, different routine, different pattern. We don't always know what it is. Sometimes you have a plan, great. But when there's no plan, that still doesn't mean you can't make efforts. And those efforts are empowering and they will make a breakthrough because it is a staircase. And that was the statement. And if you think about it, this is what empowered the Jewish people. Not just then. We're talking about 3,333, 34 years ago. It's over three millennia since. Those that held on to that formula, that held on to that directive, to that declaration, by you so, move forward, are the ones that prevailed. Sometimes it made sense, and very often it did not make sense. But it is some type of relentless pursuit, unwavering commitment, that we will definitely prevail and succeed. It comes from, yes, that infinite power of the soul 
that really is connected to something that is beyond the mortal. And when you're able to access it, and sometimes you don't always feel it, but you access it through your actions, there will be a breakthrough. Try it out. Now, of course, the question is, how do I build that type of confidence? Well, building it is important, and you, and you build it through the spiritual spa, study, prayer, action, which is cognitive, emotional, and behavioral conditioning. But you can't always wait to build it. Sometimes you just have to act. Sometimes you have to move. Every one of us, no matter what you're doing, you may say, I don't have a solution right now for this particular place I'm stuck in, but you can do something else. You can bring light into your life. For example, you're stuck in a situation. What stops you from calling someone and just saying a kind word? From giving someone a little charity? From volunteering or helping someone? And you'll say, what does that have to do with my being stuck? It has a lot to do. It's not about that particular circumstance. It's about you. The fact that you've done something that's empowering, that's validating, that fulfills your mission, has empowered and strengthened your soul. You've moved forward. So sometimes the moving forward is toward a direction. Sometimes you don't know what direction, but you've done something. Instead of the other option would be, since I'm stuck, I'm just going to be depressed. I'm going to lie in bed and wait till a miracle happens. Waiting for a miracle. That's not an option. So a move doesn't always mean a move toward the exact goal. It means a move in your life that you don't allow yourself to become static. That you don't allow yourself to become trapped. Trapped, what I mean by trapped is just stuck in a place, paralyzed. You're constantly moving. You're constantly moving. And look at life itself. Life itself is constantly moving. The pulse is pulsating. The heart is beating. Your breath is breathing. Life, by definition, is always moving. Sometimes you see the direction, sometimes you don't. So as we climb the spiral staircase of our lives, always remember that there is always going to be a breakthrough if you keep moving. The worst thing is to stop moving. If you stop moving, then how could, that, how could something new happen? If you're not doing anything new, nothing new is going to be generated. As they say, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And that's the trap. Our attitude has to continue to be moving. And that changes things. As I like to say, I'm very fond of saying, I'm not sure if I heard it somewhere or I coined it or a combination of thereof. If you thought what you thought, if you say what you said, and if you do what you did, what are you going to have? What you had. It's a mathematical certainty. If you thought what you thought yesterday, and you said what you said yesterday, and you do what you did yesterday, you're going to have what you had. Simple as that. But if you think differently, and you say something differently, and you act differently, you'll have something different. What that is, sometimes you'll see immediately, sometimes it takes time. So it's cause and effect, effect, cause and effect, action and reaction. The movement is the action. Movement always creates a reaction. And if we're blessed, it's exactly what we were waiting for, exactly what we we're hoping for. And if we're blessed even more, sometimes it may not be exactly what you were waiting for, but it's what you need. And you come to realize and be wise, to be flexible, not always be trapped in what you think you need, because that's another trap. You think you need it. So movement is the key to everything. And movement, we're all capable of doing that movement. Now, of course, when you're in a situation, you say, well, I'm not in the mood of moving. So get somebody. Invite somebody to kick you in the pants. Not, not, don't force, no one should force themselves. But you should invite it. You should welcome it because you know it's necessary. It's just like a person who needs exercise because they're in a lethargic state and they don't want to do exercise. But the exercise is exactly the thing that's going to help them get out of that state. And continuing to remain lethargic is only going to create things that are worse. Same approach psychologically. Move forward. The fifth path, the true path that creates breakthroughs. This has been Simon Jacobson. It's always an honor and pleasure to say a few words. Please share this if you felt it meaningful. And I'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments, your feedback, your suggestions, your critique. Simon Jacobson, MeaningfulLife.com is our platform, but we have, we're on all the different platforms on social media. 
Check it out. Check us out. We have a, a, a wide array of offerings on our calendar, different programs, both video, audio, text-based, and really almost anything that is there to nourish your soul and help you live a more meaningful life. Thank you very much, and be blessed.